I have a few somewhat obscure and lesser known corners of Adobe Illustrator that I personally make use of when logo designing, and I'm going to share them with you lucky lot. So the first thing we're going to look at today is something that can be found in the attributes drop down menu found here, and you need to click the show all option. So I have two shapes and I would like my logo to have the G design cut into the square below because I think it looks pretty neat. So we already know that if we use the Pathfinder window, we are going to create a destructive workflow because once we use the minus front option, we cannot edit the design easily with the group selection tool after the fact. So this is fairly common knowledge and it's something you should try and refrain from doing in your logo design workflow. So let's back up a moment and instead of using the Pathfinder, let's use a compound shape. Now, as you probably know, or you might know, the compound shape pretty much does the same thing as the minus front option, but it's not set in stone. We can come in and edit and change things or even release the operation at any time. But in the attributes panel, we can actually toggle between creating a hollow cutout option or having multiple shapes united together as a compound path. Now it does this based around values and the direction of vector paths. And I'm not going to go into that now because it's not really too important and it's going to confuse some people. But just remember that this panel allows you to toggle between a hollow cutout option as well as a united option, of course, with compound paths. So let's look at another option using this method. And just so you know, this isn't actually a logo of mine. It's just some shapes I threw together for the purposes of today's video. So let's make a compound shape again, but this time with a right click. So for this design, I want the shapes to unite it together so I can toggle the option in the attributes panel. So I'm left with a design where I can use the group selection tool to edit the actual shapes and move them around, even though they're essentially united together. There is something else in this panel that I do make use of in my logo design process. And that's especially true for geometric logo designs. And that is the center points. Now you can switch them off in this panel. And some people, for whatever reason, find their center points have disappeared. And it's often because this setting has been changed somewhere along the lines. So on the design, I have two center points, one for the large square and another one for the center of the smaller shape at the bottom where it was originally a square before I cut it out. So this is another compound path logo and the bottom left segment is in fact cut into the larger square. So let's head into the outline mode with command or control Y and we can make use of these center points. So again, I'm going to use the group selection tool and I can actually click the smaller shape of the compound path and then press R for the rotate tool. Notice how it snapped to that center point, and this means I can actually hold down the Alt Option key and then click the center, allowing me to perform precise rotations. Now, a huge part of logo designing, in my opinion, is being precise and very neat. And working in the way I'm demonstrating today in this video really does help with that. So I can also rotate the smaller shape in relation to the larger square. And remember, this is actually a compound path. So yeah, I could actually just rotate the entire design to gain the same outcome here. But I'm just demonstrating to show you the kind of things possible with rotation within a compound shape. So yeah, working with the attributes panel and other tools in combination can really help with a non-destructive workflow for your logo designs. So let's move on to a few other things I find helpful in today's video. So I recently showcased some of the most recent updates in Adobe Illustrator CC 2020. And one of those updates was the glyph snapping function. Now you can go back and check that video if you missed it, but here is one real life scenario where this update is really, really useful. So I want my logo type to be the exact same size as my logo mark. Yet I don't want to outline the text. Now the logo mark would often snap to the text or box, which isn't the actual size of the text itself. But with the new updates, I can align the logo mark to the exact size of the typography with my green guides showing me how that's done. So again, this is another non-destructive workflow method. The next example makes use of some random logo type thrown together and it's not an actual design, just so you know. 
but it does show a problem that you might encounter with your logo design workflow. This text box is so large that it takes over the entire logo type from the bottom. I can't select it because it's just in the way and overcrowding it. But if I come into the Illustrator Preference settings, we can click the option where we only select text by the baseline. And this means that we can navigate our design so much easier just by selecting the baseline of the logo type. So I am showing you these things today as a kind of a reminder and some really neat settings that will make your logo design workflow easier, quicker and less of a headache. And in a similar fashion, you might find it annoying when you go to select part of your logo mark and you might accidentally select something else or you know you just get into a, a kafuddle if it's really busy. But we can actually activate a setting that means we only select an object by the vector path and not the fill. This gives us a very precise and tactile way of navigating around our logo designs in Adobe Illustrator. And it's something that you might want to make use of and consider. And I hope you did learn something today. And if you want to learn something else, do click a video on screen. And until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.